You know, we dodged a bullet from the sun. The sun's atmosphere above sunspot 1112 is crisscrossed by a tangled web of magnetic filaments. At the end of the day on October 10, one of them erupted. And because the blast site was located near the sun's eastern limb, Earth was not in the line of fire. We lucked out there. The event should not affect our planet. Future eruptions, however, could. Sunspot 1112 and its unstable network of filaments are turning toward Earth, and the next blast could send something our way. We dodged this one, Mitch, but what about tomorrow or the next day? Well, that's right, George. Uh, it, what a great show, by the way, uh, already. <laughs> and uh, you covered a lot of great points, and your investigation is wonderful. You really, you, you know, not, not a lot of people know about the far side of the sun, so you've done some great work. And speaking of forecasting and the far side of the sun, yes, 11-12 uh, uh, um, uh, was, was not a whole lot of anything, really, except for uh, the emitting of, of, of significant uh, uh, charged particles. Uh, really, it took on the uh, resemblance of a prominence. A prominence is that big loop that we see from time to time uh, that's raised from the sun. It, it's caused by these polarized uh, charged particles that collide together, some coming from one side and the other the opposite direction, and they smash and they twirl up, twisting up into space. And that's what we see. And that's what the sunspot uh, region 1112 did. And because of that, uh, it was the only reason it got uh, people's attention. Uh, really, it's a, a, a small B-class flare. Uh, and the next one would be a C is a larger, uh, and then, of course, X. Uh, that's, or in that's, class the, that, X. that's the mama of all of them, huh? The X-class is the mama of all. And then the uh, subcategories of the X uh, can go as high as an X-46 which is what we recorded, but typically a very large solar flare is an X1. Uh, but the, in, in cycle 23, we saw several uh, X5s and 6 and 7s. And then there was the, speaking of Halloween coming around the corner, they call it the Halloween solar flare, or the Halloween flare. What's that? That was, that was, uh, that was October, actually it was November uh, 3rd. But it was just after Halloween in 2003. That was the solar event. <clears throat> and thank goodness it was just going around the western limb. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have literally been a killer. Uh, it was, that was the X-46. It, it, it pegged NOAA and the U.S. Air Force had to recalibrate uh, their instruments. Because at the time, it only went up to an X-10. Uh, and now the, they, they've compensated for much larger. So uh, I hope people aren't going to sleep uh, over the, the sun's activity because I think uh, uh, this particular one, as well as more that we're going to see, will appear and register as a relatively small event, such as a B-class flare. Right. But because of the cycle we're in, uh, the Earth's magnetic field has lessened somewhat, uh, significantly, actually, and uh, so it doesn't take as much of a punch uh, to cause some harm. What could happen, Mitch, if one of these hit us directly? Well, if it's a large one and it hits us directly and we're in a weakened state, meaning the magnetic field, uh, let me go in stages. The first thing that's going to uh, take, take the hit will be the satellites. Uh, the satellites will go out. It'll kill them all. Which includes uh, radio, television, ATMs, everything's connected to the satellite, cell phones, everything. It could be disastrous. Uh, NASA and, and others have actually been writing about this uh, and, and, and just saying how prone we are uh, to, you know, really a, a, a catastrophe with not one um, uh, bomb going off uh, uh, other than the, the be, be, Because the Earth rotates, Mitch, what would happen if, a, if an X-flare hit the planet, but let's say, you know, the other side of the planet was faced toward it and we weren't? Would we be okay or do, does it keep coming at you? Some places will be worse than others. Now, remember, there, there is a, um, a, what's called a procession. So it, it's really an up to down uh, uh, as opposed to a left to right. So uh, re remember, the, the, the solar flare will be coming from above. And it, although we are at a, at, at a slight angle, 
uh, that which would be closer, which often is Canada and any anything just, uh, of course, Alaska and anything near the North Pole, that's going to be fried first. And then it works its way down from north to south. But because of the precession, uh, it does uh, have a slight tilt. So, yes, some uh, of the earth would, uh, would be more vulnerable than others. Man, now so many other things going on. We talked about an earthquake and a swarm in Arkansas. They're beginning to say, hey, we think we're finding these new faults now. These could be huge one day. Well, it's related to the Earth's core. It's, uh, uh, yes, the instruments, uh, new instrumentation and, and more people watching, sure, that has something to do with it. Population has something to do with it, no doubt. And the cyclical events of, of the drought and, and uh, monsoon, you know, heavy rains and drought, all that plays a part. But in addition to that, or as well as that, is the Earth's core itself. The Earth's core is, is, is shifting, if you will. It, it, remember, it's a very, very the, what's called the mantle, uh, which, which is where all the tectonic plates uh, lay upon, and, and we have these cracks all over. We call them fault lines. And the Earth's core plays a, 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 a huge role in that. And, it, and, of course, the Earth's core is related to the magnetic field, magnetic field related to the sun. It's all tied together. Uh, so if... Everything is uh, kind of, uh, cycling, just as many of us have, uh, just as science says, uh, then we are in, in a, a, a vulnerable time. Uh, it, it is true the Earth has seen it many times before. We haven't. <laughs> uh, so uh, it, it, this happening in our time and uh, so being so dependent upon um, electricity uh, that, uh, that we certainly are vulnerable. And how long do you think things would stay? I guess if the, if the satellites get hit, do they, like, get hit, they go down for a while, and then they come back up, or are they wiped out? These will be wiped out. If we, if we had a direct hit of a large solar, solar event, it would, they would be wiped out. They would fry. Uh, now, yes, backups, and I'm sure at first the military will get theirs back up as soon as possible. Yeah, they, no they, they, they go first. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and uh, uh, so that, that, that can occur. But let's not forget the, the, the last big one that really affected everybody was, uh, was not that long ago. It was, it was um, uh, ni 1989 when uh, the solar event uh, knocked out the, the power grid up in uh, Canada around Ontario. And they were out of power, a large portion, for uh, weeks. Not hours, days, but weeks. So uh, it takes quite a bit of time to, to uh, get this back up. Would it uh, also affect airline uh, travel? Absolutely. Uh, the airline is, is uh, uh, the, the FAA is tied in directly with the U.S. Air Force and with NOAA. Uh, and so when, when solar activity is high, as it was in, two, in um, uh, 2003 in particular, but cycle 23, uh, uh, that uh, airlines were ordered to fly at lower altitudes or change uh, uh, altitude uh, uh, directions totally. This was also the time when, uh, on s several occasions, uh, you know, I think it was like three, which I think is a lot, uh, our astronauts had to rush in yes. uh, in the, uh, in the uh, safe room, space right? shuttle. Yeah. yeah, and also the space station. There's a safety room. Uh, I think it's surrounded by fluids, and, and, uh, and they, had to, they had to take cover there. In fact, one shuttle miss mission was canceled uh, due to solar activity. So tell me, Mitch, about the tsunami risk in L.A. What's going on? Uh, I, I, let, let me, uh, I will. Just, just one second. Let me just finish on the sunspots uh, and your excellent uh, uh, work on, on uh, knowing about the far side of the sun. Most people don't know about that, where we can actually view the sp sunspots that co are coming around. Uh, sunspot 1112 doesn't look like it's going to cause too much more trouble, but you never can tell. Uh, we'll know in the next 48 hours. Certainly could come up to a C-class flare. Mm. Uh, and by tomorrow, it will be direct, uh, or Earth, uh, directly Earth-directed, right, right center point. So we'll see what happens. Sunspots 1110, um, 1110 uh, and 1109 are coming around the, uh, the uh, uh, western, uh, uh, excuse me, the eastern edge of the sun. It's reversed. And, uh, and I think we're, in, in tomorrow we'll see 11, uh, sunspot region 1108 pop up. So uh, 
my equation will suggest that we should see some unusual uh, and extreme weather in the next 72 hours. Okay. It is directly relative to uh, the so solar uh, power activity. All right.